Hello everyone and welcome to Health Issues. Carol Balbisek in July 31, 2019 in her article on alcoholism defines alcoholism as the most severe form of alcohol abuse and involves the ability to manage drinking habits. It is also commonly referred to as alcohol use disorder. Alcohol use disorder is organized into three categories, mild, moderate, and severe. Each category has various symptoms and can cause harmful side effects. If left untreated, any type of alcohol abuse can spiral out of control. This is the health issues of TVUP, and we are here today to discuss important topics of health in our society today. This is Dr. Teddy Herbosa, your host for health issues. In this episode on alcohol abuse, we have our expert family medicine practitioner and toxicologist, Dr. Alan Junisho of the Department of Family and Community Medicine and the National Poison Management and Control Center. He detoxifies persons with substance use disorder, has special interest in counseling families with addicted members. Hello, Alan, and welcome to Health Issues. Hi, hello, good day, good day. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, we haven't seen each other for some time, right? Yes, uh, you've been missing in action at <laughs> Philippine General Hospital. We were neighbors in the, your office is just beside the Division yeah, of yeah. Trauma at the Philippine General but Hospital. You've been doing good things for UP, so keep, go, keep mm -hmm. doing that. So, let's start. Uh, what is alcohol abuse, Alan? Well, uh, we, there are criteria for alcohol use disorder, okay? But uh, just so that we can simplify everything, okay? If you have been taking alcohol uh, regularly for a year at least, and then after that, you know, there are adverse consequences to your life because of the use of alcohol, you've got a disorder. Like, for example, uh, if because of your drinking, uh, you're already, you, you isolate yourself from your family. If because of your drinking, you're getting low grades. Or if you're working, then you, know, you, you come late, your, your work is suffering. And all of these things are because, precisely because you're taking alcohol, you've got a problem. You know? So I, I take alcohol. I attend social events. Mm -hmm. They'll hand me a glass of wine, uh, uh, glass of scotch. Mm -hmm. And I take this. Sometimes I take more than I can handle. <laughs> so, uh, what is there like, like a standard drink that will uh, prevent me from abusing alcohol? Well, it's a it's a mix, no? Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, you have uh, healthy, unhealthy effects of alcohol. Correct. Okay, as opposed to those uh, the addictive effect of alcohol. Uh, so, when we talk about the addictive effects of alcohol it doesn't really matter how much you take. What matters is the effect on your life. So if you have adverse consequences uh, because of continued drinking, adverse consequences to your life, then you, know, you have a use disorder. On the other hand, uh, if we're talking about health effects, okay, so they have this, uh, they, they have the, you mentioned standard drinks. No? Uh, one standard drink is supposed to be either a regular bottle of beer mm -hmm. or uh, a, a shot of uh, a glass, a regular glass of wine, of wine. or a uh, regular shot glass, shot glass, huh? okay, of uh, these hard liquors. Kasi so I can drink all three. Pinoy, <laughs> Pinoy. So I can drink all three, and I'm okay. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going to define this now. Sa mga Pinoy kasi when they say pa shot shot lang tayo, but kalahating baso yun. That's yes. not a shot. Okay, the shot is shot, the jigger. shot glass. Oh, it's a jigger. jigger, which the is about thirty one to jigger is one forty-five shot. ml. Yeah. Correct. So that's one standard drink. Wait, no. Alcohol has different, I'm, I know for a fact that my shot of whiskey has different alcohol content than my glass of wine, yes. red wine, and my bottle of beer. So generally, beer would be anywhere from 3 to 6% alcohol. 3 to 6%. And then after that, wine would be maybe 12 to 14%. And that doubles already. And then after that, for the like, uh, gin or whiskey, we're talking about 40% alcohol. That one. So that's a percentage of alcohol in that particular... Yes. Drink my, the, yes. the amount of alcohol mm -hmm. that, I, that mm -hmm. my body takes. But you've heard 80 proof. Correct. Yeah. Now that, that's that's another. So what's 80 proof? That's a what's 40 That's a proof? traditional way of. Uh, it started in. You know, it started in in in. They either write proof or volumes percent. Yeah. So percent is the uh, that's the scientific metric way of doing it. But a long time ago, uh, in order to be able to prove the potency, for example, your whiskey, sinisindihan mo yan. So, but then they decided to give a number to it. Uh -huh. And so 80 proof actually corresponds to 40%. So I drink, I drink whether I drink uh, beer or red wine or whiskey, mm -hmm. 
I drink it to a level of what I call myself tipsy, which is enough for a social event for me to talk. Mm -hmm. Well, with, with the guests and with other people in your social event. Can you define medically what is intoxicated? Yeah. Uh, the nice thing about uh, alcohol is that uh, uh, we call it there's a dose-dependent relationship. We need to say that if this is the dose, we know that these are the effects. Okay. And you can actually extrapolate backwards. Now, if these are the effects on you, probably this is the dose. And so, uh, like driving, for example, anything above 50 milligrams per deciliter in the blood, okay? Uh, that's 50 already. milligrams per deciliter would be equivalent to how many drinks? Uh, you'd probably, because uh, the, the standard drink would be about, uh, if for men, okay, mm -hmm. two standard drinks per day, that's about it. So I, either two beers and... Two beers or a mixture. And if someone, uh, and if I'm caught by the police or the MMDA and they do a breath analyzer on me, they will detect that I'm beyond the, the limit? You'll probably, it depends, because there are people who drink chronic, who, who are regular drinkers, they, they metabolize it faster. Okay. Okay. So it's different. Uh, but then there are people who don't drink, and they, they get hit rather quickly. So they can Why? take one shot, and the effects of intoxication. Yeah, that's will be right. Good. That's right. And oh. you have people who drink ten glasses of beer, ten bottles, but and uh, they they are okay. They, they seem okay, but that's also because usually because these guys are chronic drinkers, and uh, their they, liver is adjusted. The drug metabolizing enzymes are yes. Induced. Alternatively, alternatively, uh, they actually. Uh, because there are Asians generally okay. uh, don't handle the alcohol very alcohol well. drugdrainness uh, uh, deficiency right uh, of right Asians, oh. correct. so again it depends so on your in genetic our body we have uh, uh, an enzyme right the that's right alcohol dehydrogenase mm. and Asians are known Filipinos including Filipinos start to flare up and become red and sneeze and all well, these are actually there are two enzymes here the first right. one is al uh, alcohol dehydrogenase. Rogenase. And that one converts it to this chemical called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde, that's the one that causes you to flush. The flushing. Okay. The redness. So it's not an allergy, but right. it's because of a lot of acetaldehyde in your, in your blood. And then there's that second enzyme that converts it now so that eventually it becomes just water and carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Now, it's that second enzyme that generally a lot of Asians are lacking. I see. So that's okay. the Asian, uh, they call it something, Asian. It's the Asian flush. Flush, yeah. Uh -oh. And that's why the consumption of alcohol of Asians at a well, that, small level that, 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 starts to flush. Yeah, but that, that doesn't stop Asians from drinking anyway. I know. Uh, the consumption, <laughs> we're still one of anyway. the highest. Tokyo, Japan, oh, uh -oh. Uh, Korea, and We're Philippines. supposed to be one of the biggest one. beer drinkers in the world. Correct. Gin, gin drinkers. Gin drinkers. Not beer, well. but gin. Mm. So, when do you say a person is intoxicated? So, uh, the first manifestation of uh, intoxication okay, mm -hmm. is actually a pleasant one. And, uh, That's the one I like. Yeah, you just tipsy you know, and lightheaded. And you become more talkative, talkative yes. less inhibited. That's why they serve uh, punch at parties, Correct. you have cocktails, so that uh, all of a sudden people, you know, people... Uh, Socialize better. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they lose their shyness. Inhibitions, you know? yeah. Uh -huh. And that's because uh, alcohol inhibits in the inhibitions. Yeah, so if okay. you're, you're a normal it person without the alcohol, inhibitions. you're shy. You're a lady, you want to talk to the handsome guy, yeah. you're shy. But with the shot of alcohol, so, diba, the, you lose that inhibition. There's that, there's that saying that, you know, bago ka magtapat ng pag-ibig, di magsasiging ka muna, <laughs> bago ka lumigaw, iinom ka muna, just to, you know, uh, pampalakas ng loob. Correct. Diba? So that's that effect. The effect yes, on yes. the uh -oh. uh, then, you know, inhibition like, of the inhibited behavior. You depress the inhibition so depress that uh, inhibition. what ordinarily you would not laugh at, you find funny this time. Correct. Okay. Uh -huh. And then you can say things that uh, There are also people that are talkative and when you give them alcohol, they just sit there quietly. Yeah, there are those. No? So the, the effects can vary. But generally, uh, so this one, it also gives you a feeling of uh, euphoria. To euphoria. Extent, yeah. Okay. Uh, and so you're, you're feeling good. No? But if you, if, you, if you drink more and you get to levels of uh, 100 to 300 milligrams per deciliter, yan ang classic, di ba? Drunk. Pag naglalakad ka, pag ewang gewang, uh, di ba? Yeah. Pagkatapos, eh, That's the one that goes to my ER with a positive Lombard test, yeah? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, walk oh, oh. When, you watch, you, when you watch the movies, di ba? Ma, hindi ako lasheng, mga ganong klase mag, oh. tapos nagsasilta, then he's unsteady in his gait. So uh, it affects cerebellar movement, it affects your gait, mm. it affects your speech, 
and it's no longer normal. Yes. In fact, so that's uh, a high, the then next it becomes level. pretty dangerous now mm -hmm. because uh, if you're driving... Your are, reaction time is delayed. Yes, that's right. Okay. In uh, fact, you can fall asleep. Then, if, for example, from, if, if you get to levels of uh, 300 milligrams per mm -hmm. deciliter, then uh, this is the part where you can have seizures or you can lose consciousness. And when you get to 500 milligrams per deciliter or more, that's the time that you, you know, people die at that level. Those are the cases we see in the emergency department mm. with alcoholic encephalopathy, yes. correct? So they're, they're now going to coma. Mm. We have to reverse it. We give them uh, the 50-50. Glucose uh, to reverse thiamine, it, no? and thiamine and vitamin B. But uh, no, some people, uh, some of the young people, and you understand this is supposed to be for the young people. No? Correct. So they don't realize uh, that alcohol is actually a poison. No? Correct. And uh, uh, like again, uh, it's 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 it has a social function. Okay. Mm -hmm. And but uh, this guy named Paracelsus, he's the father of the the, the great great grandfather of toxicology. He said the difference between a medicine and a poison is the dose at which it's given. So, given the difference a, between a medicine and a poison, poison is, the, is dose. the dose at which it's yes, given. Yes, yes. So, for and example, I was young too, uh -oh. and our drinking were binge drinking. That's right. Okay. Which is about dose. Now, binge drinking, they say, is if you if you drink, and then you reach levels of the of fifty is that's the euphoria, talkative, right. one hundred. That's the time when you start you know, having difficulty of keeping one. your balance. Okay, if you drink and you reach eighty, okay, that's already considered a binge. Wow. Yeah. So, so is there like a safe level of drinking? Uh, this is the advice of, uh, of, at least for, this is for Caucasians. Okay. okay. So we have to extrapolate for, 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 Asians. for, for Asians. But uh, for Caucasians, okay, people have determined, doctors have determined that uh, you want to stay uh, within two standard drinks per day. Two drinks. For men. Okay. And one standard drink per day for women. For women. Why is there a gender difference? Well, the men kasi are bigger. They're, they're, they're bigger. They're bigger, no? So uh, it's uh, about terms of, per weight. In terms of muscle mass, it's bigger. So yeah, they the, can the handle more. The dose is dosed by weight, right? Yeah, so, so if you have a bigger body mass index, mm -hmm. you probably can take more alcohol. Uh, now, uh, and here's the deal, huh? okay? Two drinks per day. Correct. But... Uh, if you don't drink, it's not like a sick leave, the where you can accumulate it. I didn't drink for six days. On day seven, I can have. <laughs> so on Friday, drinks, on Friday, I can get more <coughs> drinks now. No, no, it's not that you use it or lose it. Okay. okay? So uh, it's at that single moment that when you drink, you're allotted mm. two drinks, and beyond that, most likely. Then uh, anything beyond that, then you start tempting fate. That's when harmful effects can happen. Okay? You can either get violent. You can either get. Uh, well, it depends on driving. It depends on people. Uh, it depends on how people's constitution, but uh, that would be pretty much the safe, okay? And, uh, okay, so there is some truth uh, to the statement that there are some heart benefits, some cardiac benefits for, for people who drink wine. Okay? Yeah, this although, is promoted by the uh, wine, French winemakers. So. Although there's, there, there, there's some debate, is it the alcohol or is it really, you know, the antioxidants you find in wine? The tannins in the red right. wine. That's what okay, so, uh, but... Uh, when you go beyond two drinks uh, for men and one drink for women per day, then uh, you lose that benefit. Now, I said we have to extrapolate for Asians. Asians are smaller. Correct. Okay. So, uh, and I, I don't think there have been studies yet that have determined what is a healthy level for Asians. So there's still no uh, widespread study on that, 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 what is the safe level for Asians mm, or what because of the absence of that uh, enzyme that uh, and, metabolizes. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and most of the studies really have been done on uh, Europeans, Correct. North Americans. No? And even they will say that uh, this is not, and, and let me be clear, okay, when I say this is the recommended level, okay, this is the recommended level for people who are already drinking. Okay. But if you're not drinking, the doctors will say, don't start. Uh -huh. <laughs> and if you're not drinking, if you're a kid, don't uh, start, right? But if, if you are not. drinking already, then stay within this level because this is the level at which, you know, generally it's safe. So, Alan, when so we talk... Na yan, na, there's uh -huh. already, na yon, okay? So, okay, when we talk about uh, alcohol, 
the specific alcohol we're talking about is not isopropyl alcohol, right? No, 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 no. It's uh, ethanol. Ethanol. Uh, ethanol. ethanol. Uh, just last m couple of months ago, in the Christmas season, yes. we had Christmas parties where several people were poisoned. Not several, because 500, more than 500. 500 people from more Laguna and Quezon were uh, poisoned by methanol contained in Lambanog. in Lambanog. I heard you were the one on duty at the Philippine yes. General Hospital at that time. <laughs> Can you tell me your experience? <laughs> okay, let's talk about this methanol toxicity and poisoning. Well, so uh, methanol is an alcohol, okay? Ethanol is an alcohol, but it's ethanol that we drink. Yes, the okay, that's the one. That's, that's the one beer, one. wine, and whiskey, and etc. Et methanol okay? is toxic. Now, methanol, that's the toxic one. That's toxic okay, to the it's human one body. Of those, it's called a toxic alcohol. Correct. And uh, the reason why it's so toxic is because when you, the same enzyme that breaks down our ethanol, okay, from beer and wine, that's the same one that breaks down methanol. Except that, except that, instead of producing uh, relative acetaldehyde, it produces formaldehyde. AKA formalin. And that's toxic to the human and body. That's toxic, yes. Oh, and so and then this formalin is converted further to formic acid and it destroys so, your eyesight. You know, so you, 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 you go blind. So the know, blindness is one of the heart, are... you get comatose, you know, and uh, and, and, and and there were mortalities here. People and, who died. And how did methanol get into the lambanob? Well, I'm I'm not uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in distilling, but I was informed okay, yes. by somebody who does it. It's that uh, when you, it's, it, it really, it's really one of those things that are formed in the process of the distillation uh, to Lambanog. No? And so, so, so you really have me ethanol So there is a certain methanol. amount. There is a certain, a certain amount. amount. Okay. But and uh, I, I, was, I was informed that uh, the people who do, they are, are actually able to, Process it so they'll separate it out. They'll redistill it. They said redistill it to, to uh, several steps so that all the methanol. So is the methanol removed. is gone. Okay. But in this case, I think a big order was taken. Yes. For a party that was scheduled. Now the interesting thing. There's another source of methanol. Yes. Okay. The other source is that there are people who actually add it. No. Add the methanol. Yes. Okay. That's not good. Okay, but. This is, again, we, we don't know if this is what happened, okay? But uh, uh, we are aware that it, it, it has happened in the past. Yes. Okay? Where, uh, because... It's the, referred the, to your center, right? The Lambanog there. also is, you know, it's expensive. Eh? Correct. And uh, so if you, if, if you sell it, you, you know, you you're going to sell out money. So what yeah. you have to do, what people do then is they get uh, some Lambanog and they mix it now with ethyl alcohol. And so that has a lambanog flavor, okay? but it's not pure lambanog, so it's ethyl alcohol. And then this is the one that they now retail. Uh, what I heard is if you add other things, that's not considered lambanog because the process yeah, of so lambanog should be actually a natural process oh. from fermentation. So but, but let me ask you, oh. well, and one interesting thing that happened there was the director of Philippine General Hospital at that time ordered several boxes of Vodka. In vodka Initially and, and vodka, gin, and, then later And then later gin. on gin because they ran out of vodka. Hmm. So, well, vodka was too expensive, so we decided to go to <laughs> Vodka gin. was too expensive, and, but gin became the so, order. Can you explain why PGH said, I, I'm sure there was a Christmas party that time, but yeah. it wasn't going to be used for the party, right? No, it's going to be used for the methanol patients. Okay, so how um, is gin or vodka useful for the methanol toxicity? Well, because, uh, like I said, but there's an enzyme that breaks down the alcohol, the ethanol. Okay? The same enzyme also breaks down methanol. Mm. But between methanol and ethanol, that enzyme likes ethanol better. So it's a competitive inhibition. Yes, so you, yes. you oh. give the patient, do they shot so, it? It's, so give the patient ethanol. How many drinks were given to them? Oh, More yeah, than two. We, 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 had to, we had to compute it. Okay. We so, had to calculate it at a level that was... Uh, they couldn't drive, you know. So we don't have to do that. But, but basically the treatment, the treatment, the antidote for methanol poisoning was ethanol. is ethanol, ethanol or alcohol that we're talking that's about. That's the one. That's Wonderful. the one. Interesting. Oh. It's a paradox, huh? And so the, <laughs> the, 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 the our, our patients, you know, they were, you know, nakataas ang kilay nila. I said, what? Kainom lang namin that you're going to be giving us gin or vodka. So they but took was, it orally. So they took it, yeah. But they took it... Uh, in a measured dose. Yes. Now, okay. now as a medication. Every six hours, every four hours. This is given as a medication. Classic, yeah. Oh, oh. To compete with the. To compete very, with the. Very, very interesting. Mm. Uh, so, 
tell me now, let's go back to regular alcohol, uh, your beer, your wine, your whiskey, and all other uh, vodka and gin. Are the effects to people the same, or are there different effects? It depends, yeah, because there are, there are people who are hit right away with it, okay? Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, like, I, there's this case uh, that he just takes one bottle of beer, you know, he's wild, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's already harmful drinking, adverse Correct. effect, but he, if he continues drinking in spite of that, then you know that he's got a problem, you know? he's got the use disorder. Uh, there are people so who can take... So that's called use disorder, yeah. because they cannot hold a drink. Uh, well, because bad things happen in their lives mm -hmm. because of the drinking, and they continue to do it anyway. Correct. And then you've got people... That's a very common excuse of, uh, in the ER, uh -huh. the domestic violence. Uh -huh. the, the husband always says, Nakainom po ako eh, kaya nagawa ko sa uh, asawa ko yan. But that's also a reason why it's supposed to be, what's the term for it? Eh? Uh, it's an alcohol In disorder. law, uh, if you're under the influence of alcohol, it's, it, it is... Uh, aggravating. Aggravating circumstance. It's an aggravating circumstance instead yeah. of uh, instead mitigating. Of yes, mitigating. Is mitigating. Mm. Now, when do you overdose on ethanol or alcohol per se? I drink beer. How many beers should I drink the whole case before I overdose? Uh, like I said, no, because people metabolize it differently. If you're not a drinker, then you're a slower metabolizer of alcohol. If you drink a lot, then you're a faster metabolizer of alcohol. And the reason for that is because you know, uh, alcohol, if you keep exposing the liver to, to, uh, to a regular dose of alcohol, then the liver says, there's plenty of poison in my body. Mm -hmm. I better increase the number, of the, the number of enzymes I have to deal with it. You know? And so you develop a certain tolerance for it. Okay, so, you know, you have uh, the, the typical war stories about drinking. So, you know, I can take two cases and still be okay. Uh, Sounds but that's, like my famous last words. Huh? <laughs> but that's because your liver has responded to the presence of toxin Correct. in your body. And it's trying to save you from dying by increasing the number of uh, the, 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 uh, the activity and the amount of enzymes to metabolize it. Okay, and so because of this, there's some variation about bakit tinatamaan ng ibang mas mabilis, bakit mas babagli iba. Uh, so it depends partly on uh, the degree of tolerance you develop. It also depends partly on your genetic makeup. Is, is there a definition of who an alcoholic is? If there's alcoholism, which we defined earlier. Mm. If I like to drink and I like to drink, when do you say I am an alcoholic? Well, uh, first there's that term, when are you a heavy drinker? Okay. okay. And here we're talking about health effects, okay? Not yet addiction, not yet disorder. But uh, a heavy drinker, uh, for men, we're talking about, in one week, 15 drinks. 15 standard drinks. 15 drinks. So two drinks yeah, a day. So, so if I drank every day the two drinks, I become that level, well, heavy drinker. Well, seven, if you, if, you, if you drink two a day for seven days, that's just 14. Yeah, that's still <laughs> one more. <laughs> so if you drink more than that, then, you know, then, okay, for women, it's eight. Okay. I see. So, can a person become dependent without being addicted to yes. the alcohol? Okay. Well, no. Uh, see, by uh, dependence and addiction, we'll consider that synonyms. Okay. Okay. But uh, can you be a heavy drinker and, so, not, and uh, not be addicted and not be dependent? Yeah, there, there, are. There, there are. There are people. There are people who can drink a lot, and then when they don't want to drink, they just stop. They you just know? stop. Okay. But there are people that look for it. They don't have their 15 drinks. Or, yeah, there, there are people who start drinking and then they can't stop. Correct. You know? And the, the typical story there is uh, they can't understand why people leave half a glass of beer or half a glass of wine and not finish it, you know, because they need to finish it. And then they, they, drink, uh, they drink to the point of uh, where they drink to the point of drunkenness. No? To the point of drunkenness. Oh. Uh, is they, they alcoholism they considered a disease? Yes. Okay. okay. In fact, the, the, current, uh, the current view now is that it is a chronic relapsing disease. Chronic relapsing. Yes. In other words, um, uh, if, you, if you have this condition, if you have this disorder, then even if you've stopped, okay, uh, there is still a big possibility that you might, you might drink again. You might, uh, do the, you might do the kind of harmful drinking that you were, that you were doing before. So, uh, you know, it's, it's like smoking. No? When you yeah. smoke, uh, you stop, and then you can restart any time, and you're, you're back to it again. So same thing here. With uh, my, my dad was, in your definition, an alcoholic, because uh -huh. he had like a bottle of gin every night. 
can I inher inherit yes, you can. Yes, the you can. alcoholism? In fact, uh, there are about 13 genes now that okay. are associated with heavy drinking okay, uh, and or, uh, uh, and or uh, alcohol use disorder. So alcohol use disorder is uh, genetically transmitted to children? There is a genetic component there is a genetic to it. Component. So if you have an alcoholic, for example, in one generation, mm -hmm. then don't be surprised if there's another alcoholic in, in the next but, generation. But it's not, it's not the mathematical kind of genetic. Correct, uh, correct, correct. Ge that, that There's you see, the Mendelian for example, principles of uh, yeah, gene know, transmission. White-eyed fruit flies yeah, correct, and things correct. like that. No? <laughs> correct, so correct. It's, a, it's certainly more complicated than that. And. Uh, you can imagine a, sit a situation where you, or you have the genes that will make you uh, that that will make you vulnerable to being an alcoholic. But if you grow up in an environment where uh, uh, alcohol is not available, okay, or uh, alter and you convert and, to a religion that and uh, you, prohibits and, alcohol, <laughs> and you don't also have the psychological environment, okay, okay for it, uh, it will not manifest. Yeah, it will you not probably manifest. won't be an alcoholic. So, so you said alcoholism is a disease, right? You said that earlier. Can it be cured? Okay, so we, we come back to that term, chronic okay. relapsing. Okay. Chronic relapsing, relapsing disorder. disease. Dis okay. disorder and disease. Here's, here's, a, here's a metaphor, a metaphor, partial metaphor that I use because there's certainly some basis to it. No? Uh, when, you, when, you, when you use uh, uh, alcohol or uh, methamphetamine, marijuana, et cetera, et cetera, and you use these things repeatedly, essentially what happens is that your brain uh, recables itself. You know? Now the brain's supposed to be a whole bunch of cables that are connected to each other. You know? uh, I thought the brain was wireless. And then, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happens here is that, and we'll take, we'll take a step okay. back first, okay? okay? Let's not talk about alcoholism, we'll talk about Substance. musicians. Oh, yes. Okay, musicians. Oh, writers, Edgar Allan Poe so, wrote every musicians, time musicians. Like, musicians. For example, musicians, left and right brain have to keep talking to each other. Okay. And so there is that part of the brain that connects left and right, okay? The corpus that callosum. Is thicker among professional musicians compared to those who, are, who aren't. That's the corpus callosum. Yes, right? that's and right. We call and that the reason for that is because of the repetition, reading the notes, playing. The left and right brain to keep talking interact. to each other. The, what the brain responds by making the cables thicker and making the cable connections greater. Okay? Now we're talking Four here. 4G na siya. 5G na siya. Uh, we're talking here about musicians, huh? okay. Okay, which is music, which is a good thing. Yeah. Okay? Uh, accountants will form cables for accounting, doctors okay. will form it for making Empathy. diagnoses, <laughs> engineers, same thing. Okay? The key here is repetition. Okay? You form the cables so that what you keep repeating becomes very efficient. No? Uh, here's the problem. Uh, you do it often enough, you form the cables, the cables don't go away. Oh. Okay? So you have so a it's music. It's like a scar. Yeah, it's like a scar. Well, like you probably learned to ride the bike you know, mm -hmm. when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you haven't ridden a bike for, for years and years, I'll give you a bike, okay? You'll be wobbly, but you'll learn. Correct. You, you'll, you'll, you'll go, go back. back. It will come back quickly. Because you're cable ready. Okay. So this is the chronic relapsing so thing. So same thing, same thing. You've got uh, a you, person, for example, has alcohol use disorder. He has the cables. Uh, he's been off alcohol for detoxified, 10 years, yeah, etc. Detoxified. He's gone through rehabilitation. Then all of a sudden, you know, he gets triggered. Uh, there's exposure. There's access. He has a psychological uh, environmental setting for it. He drinks again. He'll have problems. What's again. the relapse rate for alcoholics? hard to tell, huh? but what, what, I, what, what I do know is this, huh? any, any rehab center who says that, uh, uh, that, that, that their uh, relapse free rate okay, is uh, greater than 60% is probably doing a great deal of marketing. Oh, that high, huh? 60%? <laughs> the, 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 no, the, what, what usually, because relapses sometimes are the rule. Okay. Uh, although there's this jargon among rehabilitation centers that you have to distinguish a relapse from a slip, okay? Okay. Because if, for example, the rehab center is supposed to teach you how to deal with your triggers. Your desire okay? to take. And if, for example, if you drink, but you realize, oh my God, it happened again, so I have to go back to the stuff that my rehab taught me, then that's called a slip. I see. But if you drink and then you forget everything and then you go back to what you're doing, that's a relapse. 
Okay, but this is the, these are the, Interesting. this is the jargon. By the the There's also a th such a thing that I learned in med school as alcohol withdrawal. Yes. Oh. Okay. What is when, you're, when your body becomes accustomed to the present, the cells of your body become accustomed to the constant presence of alcohol. And alcohol is a depressant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and that's the reason why you go, you can, you, go, to, you sleep, go yeah. to sleep. Yeah. Okay. You have coma. Uh, because there's that constant presence of a chemical depressant in your system, your brain knows, your brain tries to adapt by increasing the chemicals in your brain to wake you up. So these are the excitatory neurotransmitters to counteract the depressant effects of alcohol. Now, what happens is, uh, because you have to function, okay? So you've got levels of alcohol constantly present. Your, your brain increases the number, the, the, uh, the amount of your uh, excitatory neurotransmitters to wake you up. It's, if you suddenly remove the alcohol, this one doesn't go down. It remains high, high. for a few days, you know, mm. maybe three to five. And because you've got a lot of you know, excitatory neurotransmitters in your brain, then you get the tremors. Hallucination. Become, hallucinations. You can't sleep. Uh -huh. You're very irritable. Irritable, irritable. Yeah. So those are the symptoms of withdrawal. Those are the symptoms of withdrawal. So uh, now how do you treat withdrawal symptoms? Oh, well, what we do now is Dose. because there's no more alcohol, right? So we now have to give a depressant. Another depressant. Oh, so you should be give diazepam. Okay? To, to calm the... Yes. And then as the, as the neurotransmitters go down, we decrease the dose of diazepam mm -hmm. until it's... Until the withdrawal off. symptoms is over. Yes. But and you're detoxified. By that time, the withdrawal symptoms are... Mm -hmm. That's defined as detoxification. Yes. yes you're detoxified. Okay? But uh, apart from that, you have to take a look at the organs in the body that are affected by the alcohol. And that's part of the, the, the liver, detoxification process. The other part. The liver, if you have ulcers, ulcers. you're bleeding because, a lot, because of the right. alcohol. So you correct all of that, plus the withdrawal, then you're detoxified. But the detoxification doesn't deal with the cables. Correct. No? Rehab will deal with that. That's where you need rehab. Now, okay, what the is good, rehab? The good alcohol? rehabilitation centers are actually, uh, these are training programs. Okay where uh, it's because of repetition that you develop these cables, these habits okay, for, of drinking. And the, the cables will actually connect uh, things like if you're sad, no, then you drink, you feel happier. You keep repeating that pretty mm -hmm. soon. You have a cable that connects sadness with drinking. Mm -hmm. no? So once you're sad, you automatically you drink. Automatically look for a drink. Or there are other triggers, like some people... When they, uh, when they feel angry, okay, they, they have to drink to drink. calm them down. Now you have a cable connecting anger with drinking. Uh, and they're depressed. Yes. They okay. call their friends and they go drinking. Then there are also external things. Like, for example, when a friend says, oh, uh, inum ka na. Then mm -hmm. you... Peer pressure. Then that becomes connected as well. Mm -hmm. no? And you do it often enough, then you, have the, you, you form the cables for it. So the hard part here, though, is... So you have to identify what these triggers are. And then the good rehabilitation centers will now train you to deal with them in a different way. In a different way. So that's rehab. But, that's okay, rehab. Uh, so, you know, instead of I'm angry with my wife and so I drink, uh, I'm angry with my wife and so I count to 20, I write down the issues, I phrase what I'm going to say, I talk to her calmly. So you want to repeat that over and over and over again so that now you develop the cables for dealing with anger that way instead of drinking. In a sense, like the metaphor here would be you're trying to develop bypass cables. Mm -hmm. you know, to, so that you don't use your alcohol cables, you use these other ones that are better for you. And so you rehab know. is really more of behavior modification. It's really a program to modify behavior yes. regarding the use mm -hmm. or this, uh, the, the alcohol disorder use. And uh, the, behavior mod the, the behavior is modified by, one, repetition okay, of these new skills, and also by, a, you know, uh, by giving people a new way to look at life and a new way of you know, uh, dealing with their problems, uh, a, way, a new way of looking at themselves. So there's some insight that has to take place apart from the behavior modification. Well, I'd, I'd like to say, let's drink to that, but that's probably <laughs> not the correct thing. But Alan, do you have any other message to our young people who view these uh, episodes and talk about uh, whether alcohol should be an important part of their health consciousness? Well, I think, I think that you know, the, if, 
if you, I think there's wisdom to the, uh, to the, to, there, there's wisdom to the uh, practice in some countries, uh, not to get, not to get, not to let young people drink until they're uh, 21. Strictly enforce the 18 and above. Mm. Uh, 21. They ask for ID in the uh, US, oh. right? You have to have an ID. It's because you know, the part of your brain that is responsible for for judgment, for prudential thinking. It's not yet developed okay. before that age. Yes, yeah, so, so you have to wait until your age 19, 20, 21, before that thing's fully developed. And if, for example, you drink and you influence it with you know, alcohol or these other mind-altering substances, then you might actually do something bad to the development of that part okay. of your brain. You know? So, so Alan. just avoid it for a while until, yeah. and then when you do drink, you know, uh, stay within the healthy levels of drinking. Thank you very much, Alan. That's been a very interesting discussion on alcohol disorder, alcohol use disorder, and uh, I'm, I'm sure our viewers out there have learned many points about this particular health issue and health problem, the disease of alcoholism and how to cure it. And I have only one advice for the viewers, drink moderately. Thank you, Alan. Okay, thank you.